one mission set that literally every single one of these recon guys, um, when I watch interviews with them and uh, or read their books, they all say the same thing. The hardest and most dangerous missions were their search and rescue missions. They called them bright light missions. And essentially, they're for the search and rescue of downed pilots, uh, recon teams that have been surrounded and cut off or, or at risk of being overran by NVA soldiers, um, or to uh, extract wounded or dead, you know, SOG team members, if that was the case. Um, so just like you and I would have uh, on our rotations on deployment, we would have, you know, especially in Iraq, Iraq's probably the easiest one to do this with because it was very concrete, you know, our, our schedule was. But mm. we'd have a week of patrols where you'd go out and do patrol ops. You'd have a week where you stood post and then you'd have a week where you stand QRF and QRF is quick reaction force. So if something happens to the unit that's out on patrol, the unit that's, you know, the platoon that's on QRF back at the FOB hop, it's, hops in their Humvees, their MRAPs and goes out to, to help them, right? Yep, They're the yep. quick reaction force. Well, that's how bright light missions worked. Recon teams would conduct, you know, patrols, recon patrols or, or, or whatever the case was for a certain amount of time. And then when they were on stand down, they would be a bright light team, right? They would be Very cool. kind of in reserve, ready to go if something happened, you know, in Laos or Cambodia. Well, for today, I, I there's just no way I couldn't talk about this guy. And some some of you listeners and, and viewers might know this guy already. Um, and his his story just has to be told. He's like he's an actual Rambo, you know, yeah. like real life Rambo. Um but the guy's name is Roy Benavidez, and this just right. shows you how how crazy a bright light mission really could could be. Um, on May second of nineteen sixty two, there's a twelve man recon team that had been uh, engaged by NVA forces and then surrounded. And it's the the NVA force that they're engaged with is a, a, a battalion strength. So you're talking a thousand guys. Okay. Twelve guys versus a thousand guys, dude. I can't even I can't even fathom that that's right. the that the the numbers are just so lopsided. I I think about the like I've been in a gunfight with you know thirty guys, forty guys, and had a smaller number than them. And rounds just seem to come from everywhere. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's hard it's hard to even be able to look up and engage targets because there's rounds just coming from everywhere. There's so many guys. To have a thousand guys surround you and your team, and then all of them shoot in your direction, I can't imagine what kind of lead was flying through the air. Just insanity. All of it, man. It's well, nuts. needless to say, these guys need a bright light team. Well, back on, you know, back on the FOB, there really isn't a bright light team on standby. I, there, there's something that happened. Whether there was another problem going on, yeah. I, I don't really know the details about that. I just know there's not a bright light team on standby. So Roy Benavidez volunteers and jumps on the helo he says i'll be a one-man bright light by no God. way yeah just said that one this, man bright light this is only the beginning All this right. is only the beginning um he he uh he gets on the helo and he does so so quickly that the only thing he actually grabs is his knife and a med bag he doesn't even take an m16 or an m4 so he's got no firearm right and he's going into a fight against a thousand nba um the Huey, uh, the Huey inserts him onto the LZ, and he armed with just that knife. He picks up the med bag and starts a seventy-five yard run through hellacious enemy fire to get to this recon team. Before he reaches the team, he's struck in the right leg by an AK forty-seven round, and he tells himself, "I've I've seen him talk about this. He tells himself, I was just snagged by a thorn. I, I, that's all it was. I was just snagged by a thorn, right?" Yeah, everybody I mean, knows that feeling when you're walking through and you, it snags like, your jeans. Savage, dude. No yeah, big deal. Just snagged by a thorn. No big deal. Yeah. He gets to the recon team and uh, and and starts looking around. They've got a ton of wounded guys. They're running out of ammo. Yeah. So he starts he starts administ administering medical attention to these wounded guys. And then he starts collecting uh, ammunition from all the dead NVA soldiers that are around them. And starts distributing this to the, the oh, surviving... Amazing recon team members right here's some more ammo here's some more ammo um while doing this he picks up a a, a fallen nva soldiers ak-47 to arm himself with which you think all right well it's just laying there but 
to think about that weapon's not BZO'd for you. That weapon, that's not, you don't, that you're not comfortable with that right. weapon. It's not yours. And he's going to just pick it up and, and go, right? And in the most serious gunfight he's ever been in his life. This guy is crazy. And uh, once he gets the casualties kind of stable and, and, and gets the ammo distributed out to everybody, he starts, he hops on the radio and starts directing close air support, directing artillery. Okay. And, and really starts putting a hurting on the NVA yeah. battalion that's attacking them. Again, he's going to be shot in the right leg. So that's two bullet wounds in the right leg. Um, he'll th- he'll shrug that off and manage to uh, direct a Huey in for mm-hmm. for a, a Kazavak, right? A, a Huey, it's the classic American helicopter. If you think, besides a Black Hawk, if you think of an American military helicopter, it's probably a Huey. Yep. And uh, he... he, he guides this Huey in and hands his AK-47 off to someone so that he can pick someone up and carry them, one of the wounded guys, pick them up and carry them to the, the helo for, for an extract. As he's doing this, he's knocked to the ground, and he had been shot in the back through one of his lungs. So now he's two bullet wounds in the leg, one through the lung. And it kind of knocks him. It doesn't, like, knock him unconscious, but it, it rings his bell, and he's kind of out of it a little bit. Oh, I'm sure, when yeah. He, when he finally collects himself and can and and you know figure out what's going on, he looks over and sees that the Huey has been hit by enemy fire. It's been destroyed. It's 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 in flames. The Holy pilot, God. the door gunner are dead. But there's still guys that have been placed on that helo for Kazavak, yeah. wounded guys yeah. that aren't dead. And the thing about Hueys or any of these helicopters, when they're damaged like that, you have the the jet fuel. Like you have the fuel and it's extremely explosive. Right, so as, as soon as that stuff catches fire, yeah, it's, it. it's over. So coughing blood the entire time, Roy Benavidez is going to get back up and stumble over to the helicopter after after being shot in the lung, and uh, and pull guys out of the helicopter before it blows. Again, he'll hop on the radio. He'll start uh, directing, you know, in, you know, directing the indirect fires and close air support. And again, he'll be shot twice more. So no now, way. now f- we're talking about a total of five bullet holes already. Two, at least two in the leg, one in the lung, and then two more bullet wounds as well on top of that. Man, that's a lot of. Uh, how much adrenaline does this guy have? And like, I, I don't know, but I want it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? everybody on the ground probably thinks like, "Who is this guardian angel?" Like, he just put He's me on Rambo, the bird, dude. He put me on the bird. He should be on the bird with me, but now the bird's crash. He's gonna <laughs> He's pull me off, me the, off bird. the bird. Uh, I'm telling you, guy's Rambo. Guy yeah, is Rambo. he's doing everything. Everything. Wow. It's, uh, it, there's so many wows in this. What do you say to that? You know, there's nothing you can say except just be in amazement. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, and it's not over yet. So after being shot two more times, he manages to talk in another Huey, right? And this is this is the final attempt. If they can't get these guys extracted with this Huey, they're they're, they're going to have to wait overnight because yeah. the the helos, the planes, even the Covey pilot is running out of fuel. Yeah. Um, which if they have to man. if they have to wait overnight, they're done for. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> So this helo comes in. Benavidez gets back to work. He picks mm. up another wounded guy, throws mm. him over his shoulder, and begins toting him to the, the helo so that they can both be extracted. As he's moving to the helicopter, uh, a downed NVA soldier he passes ends up popping up after he passes him and clubs him in the head with the AK-47, and it, uh, it knocks him down to his knees. When it knocks him down to his knees, the NVA butt strokes him in the face what? with the AK-47, then rears back to stab him with his bayonet. Okay. And when he does that, he stabs him through his, for- I think it's his left forearm, right? Benavidez pulls it out, pulls out his own knife, and stabs the NVA soldier so hard that he can't get the knife out. He has to leave it in him. This dude is a machine. Just savage, dude. Leaves that NVA there dying with the knife still in him. <laughs> Picks up the wounded guy he was carrying before and carries him to the helo, loads him in. After he loads him in, he sees two more of NVA assaulting the helicopter, scoops up an AK-47 off the ground, turns, and kills both of them. Holy crap. Right? I mean, this dude is just crazy. It's it's cra- uh, mind-blowing imagine to seeing me. seeing this crap. Like, imagine being that pilot. No. I couldn't <laughs> imagine being anybody there. Right. I couldn't too. imagine it. Um now, after this, you know, Benavides has numerous wounds and uh, and he, he a, a massive loss of blood. So, 
I think he's starting. I think he's starting to, to succumb to that. Well, other guys manage to grab him, get him on the helo, and they extract. In the six hour, it's only been six hours. In this six hour fight that Benavides has has been engaged in with the NVA, he is responsible for saving the lives of at least eight guys. But he also has thirty seven separate wounds from bullets, shrapnel, and knives or bayonets. Thirty seven. Holy. Crap. 37 wounds. Everybody thinks he's dead. Everybody thinks he's so dead, they already have him in a body bag. And when the doctor is going to zip up the body bag, the only thing Roy Benavidez can do, he can't talk, he can't do it, he can't move anything. Right. The only thing he can manage to do to let him know that he's not dead is spit in the doctor's face. That's the only reason. Before the bag gets zipped up. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're zipping it up and he spits in his face. What? It's the only reason that he's not buried now. I got goosebumps from that, man. <laughs> Dude. I'm telling you, man, this guy's just, like, whatever. Yikes, he finds dude. a way. He finds a way. Um, now, because MACV's SOG missions were so highly classified, Benavidez uh, wouldn't be awarded the Medal of Honor until much later after the war, but he mm. would be awarded the Medal of Honor, and uh, it's one of the most savage Medal of Honor stories I've ever heard he in my certainly life. certainly rates it by Dude, he, he, by he rates a movie is what he rates. Yeah. The guy needs his own movie. Um. But that's just to give you an idea of the dangers of a bright light mission. You know, th it's it's chaos. Things can go wrong quickly, and and well, they've already gone wrong, but they can get much worse. You know, it was going wrong for the NBA when he landed there. 